Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor. I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And last week we were able to go on a tour of the new San Jose Barracuda Arena, which doesn't really have a name yet. They're still looking for sponsors, so I'm just going to say it. It's the Fin Factor Arena that you will be seeing <laughs> uh, next year. So uh, Aaron, really cool tour, really good opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of those things that, you know, getting to see the bare bones and whatnot. Yeah. Just really cool opportunity for us. What did you think about that? Uh, I thought it was an amazing, amazing time to go out. And I love construction sites. I think it's kind of cool to see um, kind of I like seeing the renderings and then seeing what's actually happening and what it looks like and then you can kind of go back and forth between the pictures you go wow you can visualize what's gonna look like and how how grandiose things are you know it's kind of it's really cool um, and it was also exciting afterwards because they treated it to a free lunch at Stanley's. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been there. Well, we won't be treating you to a lunch. I apologize for that, but uh, stay tuned on this Fin Factor Spotlight and we will show you exactly what we saw. So here we are, the new Fin Factor Arena. <laughs> um, obviously not going to be the name of the arena, but uh, this will be, in, in total, Solar for America Ice is now going to be the largest ice facility in Northern America. I mean, that, it, stop and think about that for a second. A California location has the largest ice surfaces, not like international ice, but we're talking about six different sheets of ice here. Um, it's just incredible, really, when you think about it, how big this has become. And you can see some shots here that we're showing yeah, of I all mean, the different... It's, uh, it's North America, yeah. too. It's not just California. It's not the United States. Oh, yeah. it's, that's all of Canada, which is just nothing but hockey. This is incredible. And I love how when we were showing that shot earlier, it looks like a barn. It's going to be a new barn. <laughs> so this is the beginning of the tour. This is the uh, one of the entrances. Um, one of the main ent entrances, I guess. The other will be on the other side, which is where the San Jose Giants currently play. So what we're looking at here is on the Alma Street side of things. Uh, that's going to be the main entrance for uh, you know all the patrons coming in to, to view the Barracuda games. Again, like Aaron said, there's going to be a back entrance there. Actually, the back entrance and even the front, both going to have some merchandising uh, shops in there. So if you want to buy some San Jose Barracuda merchandise, uh, they'll hit you with it as soon as you walk in the door, rightfully so. And as we can see here, there's kind of the bare bones here, right? Obviously, no seats in there. But eventually, once this gets fully built out, we'll be looking at 4,200 total seats. Uh, very respectable size for an AHL arena. Um, you know, enough for the fan base to, to kind of fill the house there. You know, you go to SAP Center and you go to these Barracuda games and they've got certain areas blocked off. The whole upper bowl's got the, the curtain drawn down, right? Yeah. So this is going to be really nice to have a full packed house uh, in, in a smaller size arena. It's also going to be a lot louder than it was in San Jose Arena because there will be no curtains. Uh, you're closer to the ice and they'll be able to fill this bowl up pretty well. So here's a cool look. This is the entrance all the way down the hallway. This is where the visiting players locker room is at the very end of the hallway. They're going to have to walk that entire distance on their skates <laughs> in between each period before the game and after the game. So their feet are going to be hurting them. It's kind of funny how they designed that that way. Just kind of goes to show how much how much thought went into this building, not just kind of putting the rooms together and you know the whole architecture of it, uh, but things like that, giving them the mental advantage against the opposing teams. Um, just really well thought out. Yeah, this is a look at the bar that is actually right behind the goal. Uh, and earlier that was the entrance in the other side of the entrance. Uh, we'll come back again to this a little bit later. And so this bar at the, the club level Think about SAP Center and think about where the Zamboni comes out, right? There's that big space right behind the goal. There's no seating there whatsoever. So in this arena, what they're designed to do is use that space, not for a pathway for the Zamboni, but for using it as that bar, the place where people can sit down, mm -hmm. see the game from right behind the glass, looking right over the goalie's shoulder, and they can get their drinks there too. Uh, I, I think it's just such a, a wonderful use of space, really creative use of mm -hmm. space, instead of having that be just a tunnel, right? It's it's something that's unique. And and the other nice thing about that is, you know, for them, 
they've got it right outside where the merchandise mm-hmm. is. So, you know, you go, you get your drink, you decide after a couple <laughs> of drinks, you got to have that that jersey, right? right. So, um, no, it's, again, it's another example of this being well thought out, well, uh, really a good use of the space. I can't keep saying that enough. I mean, they've <laughs> done such a really great job with this arena. Yeah, I mean, it reminds me of Lobina. I don't know if you've been to the San Jose Earthquakes uh, Stadium, but they have the longest outdoor bar in North America, yes. Lobina. Uh, and that is also right behind the goal. And so when you're getting your drink, you can watch the game and uh, get a nice cocktail or two. So it's, it's a lovely feature, and I think it's, uh, it's very smart of them to put that in. This is going into the locker room area for the Barracuda. Um, so to the left, I believe, is the locker room. I think straight ahead is like the showers. Um, On the right-hand side there, they've got medical crew that are uh, really close to the arena, really close to the entrance. Uh, in case there was an injury, they would be able to get them um, you know, the help that they need. Uh, really close proximity to the rink. So where they're going now, uh, the guy who's leading the tour there, uh, he's going into what will be the Barracuda locker room there. So on the right-hand side, there's some showers and whatnot. Uh, the room that we're walking into on the left here, that again is the locker room. On the other side of the wall, uh, just straight back, would be kind of where they have another locker room where they're able to get out of their street clothes and get into their workout clothes. So again, everything really well thought out in terms of the placement and whatnot. Just, uh, again, a really, really awesome job. It kind of makes you wonder if they had the ability to knock down SAP Center and redo it again with everything that they've learned, everything that they know, everything that they were able to pack into this much smaller arena. Uh, gosh, just how much nicer SAP could be. Well, Matt, that construction is, I think, the SAP Center is the third oldest arena currently in mm-hmm. the NHL, which and it was only built in 91. I think construction started in 91. Right. So, um it's not that old, but it is old at the same time. So a lot of new arenas have been built. In fact, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but when the SAP Center was originally built, there was no press box. And so that is why the press box is in the rafters area. <laughs> so this is a look for, of the other entrance, and this is from the eastern side where the uh, San Jose Giants play. Uh, that's what it'll look like once it's all done. And here's a look of the map from the outside. Oh, this is on the second floor. This is where a lot of the media room will be. Um, this is where press conferences will take place. And notice the back platform is a lot larger where the cameras will go and camera operators. Um, in the front there will be the podium uh, for the players and coaches and they come in and talk. Um, this could also be set up not just for the Barracuda but the Sharks because the Sharks will also be utilizing this space, um, I believe, for training camps and, and everything else. Yeah, and, and again, practices. Yeah. I, I, again, as you'd mentioned, I really love that that back step on the theater's um, seating or steps, I guess you can call it. I love how they had extra space for you know the big cameras and the tripods and people standing in the back. And like you said, they can use that for uh, media purposes, for press purposes. They'll be able to pull down a screen and do you know learning sessions with uh, the players and whatnot there. So it's a very nice multi-purpose room. Yeah, that last picture was a look at where the scoreboard is going to go. Uh, you can kind of see the mounts up high. Uh, right in the middle of the arena. Uh, here's a good good panning shot of the entire arena from the second deck. This will be the club level. Here's a good look at what it will actually look like. Uh, you can see the press or the um, suites going around the mid the mid level there. Here's a look at what the suite will look like. Uh, pretty basic suite. There's no bathrooms in them. It's just going to be a little bar with a couple seats, standing room, and some TVs. Um, I think similar to what the earthquakes have at their stadium. If you've been there. Um, it's a little more simplistic and, and um, slim down, <laughs> if you will. So we'll go through and talk a little bit about the uh, the general assigned seating. So I, I did say assigned seating. As we've seen in SAP Center, uh, it's not always the case that when you buy your ticket, you're going to be sitting in a specific seat, right? When you pay for general admission, they kind of threw you anywhere and everywhere in the arena that uh, had that open space kind of around that uh, that rounded area, right? So uh, when you do go there to watch a game and you buy a general uh, ticket, it is going to be assigned seating. So that's kind of nice. Again, it's a smaller arena. There's less seats. Uh, at SAP, there was a ton of extra seats. You can just kind of plop yourself down wherever. But uh, in this arena, every seat will be assigned. And I think more more people kind of uh, prefer that, I, I believe. So that's what the, the general seating, again, in total, there's 4,200 seats. Uh, there are also these standard suites. So uh, these can be 
co- you know, combine. A couple of them can be combined where they have a door in between them that you can open up and kind of expand out to uh, more than just having a single suite there. Uh, here's another rendering. You can see all those suites around the outside. Now, in that back corner there, you can see kind of one bigger space. Uh, that bigger space is going to be the theater suite. Now, this one is kind of like the king of the suites, if you will. Uh, it's got its own little personal bar, um, and it's just got you know a, a bigger area than the other normal suites do. And it's kind of the only one that's there, and here we can see a rendering of it. Now, another thing to, think, to, to remember with these is that you're getting that standing space, but you're also getting that club level seating space. And in some of these shots, you'll see where they've kind of ended the concrete. Aaron, you, you had mentioned this earlier. Uh, that they hadn't fully built out the rest of where that seating area is, so it looked a lot smaller. Yeah. But considering that they're going to expand out so that you can have those seats uh, in front of you, in front of your suite, and that's where you sit, mm-hmm. uh, it, the space is actually quite large. Yeah, and, it's, and this I don't know if this is going to be one of those game day suites where they sell them out just for like big groups. Like Kind of like the, the SAP Center currently has those up I think up above, up high. Uh, it's not like they're suites that they always, you know, sell out every, or to one person or one company every every game. Yeah, they so. have that standing room kind of area. Yeah, right? exactly. This is kind of I think a, a mini version of that, uh, where they can hold many different events uh, or different corporate uh, events, which is always good a space to have and, and other options for other people. This is a look from a commercial space that's on the third floor. You get a view of the San Jose Giants. Now look how giant this space is for a company. They're going to leave it fairly bare bones. It'll be finished off on the walls. But this is the view that you're going to get from that space um, all the time. Here's an here's actual look from that space looking down on the ice. Uh, it's a fantastic look. It's a, it's a great view. And uh, it could be all yours or your company's. If you like to lease it out. Not if we lease it first. Right. <laughs> the new Fin Factor Studio. We told you it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And speaking of a cocktail or two, there's also Carl Calder's sorry, sports bar, which is being put in. Uh, this is a pretty exciting little space here. They've got some really cool design cues here. And, and we're going to go ahead and show that right now. Um, you know, they've also got Stanley's. And this is going to connect, uh, as far as we can tell. They're going to have... Stanley's uh, just down the hall essentially from this so you'll have two really nice bar areas and the rendering having you know of course some really awesome lighting in there some nice couch seating spaces we can see all this area this is bar space yeah and you called out there's there's spaces for taps right? oh yeah they, they said there's gonna be at least uh, 12 to I don't know at least a dozen different taps of beer mm-hmm. uh, going through this but the bar is huge um, and then it's just basically like a lounge space for people to come in. To me, this is like the version of the BMW lounge uh, down in the SAP Center. So it looks like kind of a loungy bar, get mm-hmm. your drink, get some food, and, and then head back to your suites most likely. A little bit more of the bougie bar uh, mm-hmm. as compared to Stanley's, but um, Stanley's holds a special place in many a beer leaguer's <laughs> yes. heart. So uh, <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely a, you know, a nice place to, to kind of kick it, hang out for a bit there. Um, Calder's Sports Bar. Uh, of course, named like the Calder Cup for the AHL Championship yeah. or Calder Rookie, uh, you know, best rookie for the NHL. Yeah. So um, that's probably where the name came from. Uh, you know, right after Calder's is this area here that we're looking at. And this is going to be the new Junior Sharks Gym. Now, I had asked about this. And what I was told was it's not just for the Junior Sharks. It's going to be used for uh, pretty much anybody who wants to go in there and use the gym. If you're somebody who's just kind of even like you know the beer leaguers, like the adult league guys, right? Uh, if you want to go in there and use that, you absolutely can. So if you've been to Solar for America before, you know that they already have a gym that's upstairs uh, in between, I believe, Center and North Rink. Um, that space is actually going to still be a gym from what we've been told, but it will be more geared towards the figure skaters. So they'll be able to have you know, equipment in there that's geared specifically for them as well as you know maintenance machines, whatever that might be. If it's a certain skate sharpening that's specific to uh, you know figure skaters, I don't know. But they're gonna have that kind of, that space is gonna be for the figure skaters and they'll have the Junior Sharks, we're calling it the Junior Sharks uh, gym that's up there. But again, it's supposed to be open for everybody. So mm-hmm. um, very inclusive. That was one of the things they had said during that tour was they wanted to feel very inclusive and not just this ex- exclusive area that's just for you know uh, people that that uh, pay to be here. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's a look now. 
that long hallway and the walk I talked about is right here. That's a long way down to get to the rink. That's again where the visiting uh, locker room will be. Now this is rink five that's being built and behind us, what we just saw, there's what, was there six locker rooms that they're building down here for um, uh, to hold many different teams at different times. Um, and again, this is like, they're, they're hoping to host more tournaments and more bigger tournaments. Now that they're gonna have all this space um, they talked about maybe some, I don't know if they mentioned the World Junior Championship, but <laughs> they're, they're going to have some, some bigger things, not just Junior Sharks level, but even above that. Yeah, there's, there's always big tournaments that are going on with ice, whether it's you know, youth hockey or uh, you know, potentially even you know, like the high school stuff, they do a lot of that there, and that, that qualifies as youth, I suppose. But uh, I mean, who knows? The, the sky's the limit. They've got six ice surfaces here now to work with. And again, being the largest collection of ice surfaces in Northern America, uh, it's gonna be a big draw. There's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be good for the area, I think. Uh, certainly good for San Jose State in the parking situation, which we will get Sa to in just a San Jose year. State also has a hockey team, correct? Yes. And so does the local high schools around, so they can now host in an arena, mm -hmm. uh, some local high school, rather than playing at SAP with you know all 20 parents there, there's gonna be <laughs> a little bit more, uh, less space, so it feels a little bit more full. Uh, imagine getting some cheering sections in there from high schools. I think it would be really cool and uh, good opportunities for, for all of them. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so one of the last things, and we talked about San Jose State's parking, but first we're gonna to go to player parking, okay? Um, if you've gone to the practices at Solar for America and you ever wanted to get a signature, you can try to get one as they're coming off the ice, but generally speaking, they just kind of wanna get going, right? Mm -hmm. um, some folks will stop, uh, but a lot of them just wanna kind of get to the locker room and be done. If you weren't able to get a signature there, oftentimes you can go to the back area where there was player parking and there was only nothing between you and the player, but just a chain link fence. And you could, you know, ask politely, hey, but can I- that chain link fence was waist high. Yeah, it well, wasn't like a full chain link fence, right? No, 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 it wasn't, it wasn't past your head or anything. I right. mean, it was just barely, you know, above not, your, your chest. I'm just saying, it wasn't a normal six foot tall right. chain link fence. This was like a- We're talking maybe four three feet. Three feet, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a pretty pretty short fence, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you could you could ask, you know, hey, uh, hey, Cooch, can I get a, a, an autograph or whatever, right? And he'd be able to walk up to you and You'd sign whatever you had if, if you so chose. And that's kind of going away now because they have private player parking, which I, I don't know. I, I feel like it, it kind of sucks because that was part of the experience on the one hand. On the other hand, I can understand why the players would be very excited about not having people hounding them after they've been on the ice. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, at the same time, if we're talking about Barracuda, I think most Barracuda players don't mind stopping. I think it's the Sharks players that would that would just want to get home. Yeah. Um, so I don't know, it, it's kind of a bummer because again, it's gonna be private parking um, and you're not gonna be able to go after a practice and you know say, hey, can I get an autograph or whatever, right? Um, at the same time, what they said was that this arena, the way the concourse is built, the way that they've got it all laid out should provide more player interactions. I'm struggling really to kind of understand that, to wrap my head around that. They said that basically the players would kind of be almost walking through the concourse at times, but I don't think that in the between periods they're gonna stop and make, you know, and sign things for people. Uh, I could be wrong, but I don't think that's what they had in mind. So maybe there's interactions in that they'll be walking by them and you'll get to see the players as they're going to the locker room, but I don't think that's the, the fan interaction that the fans are really interested in. Yeah, I don't know. I don't mind the, the parking for them. I think it's just, it'll make them feel a little bit more secure and, you know, you have a bad game or maybe not bad game, but a bad practice or you had a bad game a couple of days before and you don't want to catch some flack from some fans. But then you're walking through the concourse and it's supposed to be more interactive it's a quicker with the walk. fans. It's a quicker walk <laughs> than, than the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's probably know. true. But um, no, so it, it's just kind of interesting because, you know, they kind of, swing it in a in a positive light when mm -hmm. they're taking something away you know <laughs> that could have been a gripe from the players i'm sure it was that they addressed absolutely yeah. i'm sure that it was and and i'm glad that the the players are getting like you said uh feeling more secure and and whatnot about it but it's just it's one of those fan interactions that you know unfortunately the fans aren't really going to get that opportunity mm -hmm. but uh, if they're saying there's going to be some fan interactions in the concourse, we'll have to wait and see kind of how that pans out. But uh, moving on from the player parking situation to the everyday person going to you know beer league or to watch games or whatever, that parking situation, uh, San Jose State 
has built this gigantic parking structure on what used to be the track that was over uh, kind of adjacent to Solar mm -hmm. for America. So they're kind of charging folks and whatnot, and, and some folks are in up in arms. I know you were talking about some folks on Reddit that were not very happy about it. You want to just kind of talk about that? Sure, I posted some I posted some of the pictures that we took while we were on this tour on Reddit, and some people were asking about the parking situation because a lot of the parking is now going to be gone with all these new ICE facilities. And um, I'd mentioned that there is a parking garage on the corner, uh, and then they asked how much it was going to be, which I didn't know, and another Redditor came in and said $10. Uh, so they were upset, and they weren't upset about it for going to Barracuda games. They were upset about it because of their own beer league games. If they happen to be playing on the same night a Barracuda plays, is that quite fair that they have to pay $10 to go play their own game? That could add up, you know, very quickly. Very quickly. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they'll validate that parking pass for, for uh, the people that are playing in the beer leagues. I wouldn't be surprised if that was such a big deal. But then that just means that the ice center is going to be... Uh, footing the bill to San Jose State, who owns the property. So we don't know. We don't know the details. I can't give you any more information because I don't know any. Uh, I'm sure that will be addressed in a year from now when this is open. So it won't be a concern for at least another year. You know, in in beer league, uh, when you when you win the game that you're playing, they give you a beer ticket. So you buy two beers, you get one for free. I wonder if they'll give the winning team the validation for the parking. <laughs> you have to win to get the validation. <laughs> Man, the, the beer league would get a lot more serious if that were the Way case. Way more competitive, a lot more sandbagging going on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There'd be a lot more injuries. <laughs> so that is the tour that we got of the arena and uh, all the things that we were able to cover. Now, I'm excited. Obviously, I can't, can't tell if I'm excited or not, but <laughs> I'm excited to, uh, to, go to, this, to go to these games and uh, see the facilities. But I'm also excited on a, on a bigger level. I think this is going to be a bigger draw for free agents. I think people that are going to get drafted by the organization are going to be excited to kind of stay there because it's kind of a new injection of newer th stuff, you know, and better facilities. Um, not that the facilities were terrible beforehand, but at least it's brand new. And, and um, I think also the timing of all of these prospects coming up for the Sharks, because this won't be open for another year. Yeah. We're going to see like if Eklund's not playing in the NHL, he'll be there next year. He might even be there this year, but mm -hmm. the arena won't be open. But uh, Thomas Bortolo, you know, a couple of these up-and-coming guys, Ozzy. Wiseblatt. Yeah, he's yeah. going to be there. So um, a lot. this team is going to be good. They're going to have a lot of high-end talent that's coming in, not just third, fourth liners that are <laughs> yeah. grinding away. So uh, the team itself will be good. I think, I think that 4,200 seats are going to be hard to come by. Yeah, no, I have to agree with you. I think there's going to be a big draw for fans to come and check this out. I mean, like you said, what what better timing could you have possibly had for when the Sharks mm -hmm. were not playing well to get such a draft pick and get Eklund, and then, of course, guys like Borderlow, guys like Weisblatt um, stepping in. Even Ryan Merkley, there's there's some eyes on Ryan Merkley if he's going to be you know the next guy that, that comes up. Who knows? Hopefully he's in the NHL by a year <laughs> from now, but yeah. Hey, I mean, uh, Gushin. Gushin was another right. guy that was... Yeah. You know, turning some heads. There's a lot of talent. Quite a bit. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I think, again, if, if you're at all interested in Barracuda hockey, next year will be the year, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're going to have the whole new arena. You're going to be able to get season tickets for this. Um, oh, and by the way, Kuda Kids Club, it'll still be there. It'll it be will. back. Yep. Uh, in what capacity? They're not entirely certain, but I have to imagine uh, brand new arena, rocking team. They're going to have some good stuff for the kids. So uh, you talk about things you're looking forward to. That, for me, is another big one. Absolutely. You know, we've gone to several games at SAP. Mm -hmm. It's always been a good time. It's going to be an even better time here in the new arena with all the new uh, the, the, the bars and whatnot that they've gotten mm -hmm. there, the, the awesome-looking suites. If we ever get an opportunity to get a Fin Factor suite, <laughs> I'm in. Uh, and I can't wait to check out that club-level bar. Yes. That's going to be such a unique experience. I don't think you see that anywhere else. Yeah. In the NHL, I don't think you see that anywhere else. So um, just really cool experience. And, you know, we're, we're so glad that we were able to go and so glad that we could take you guys along with us. So I think that wraps us up. Sure. Very good. Well, uh, for Super Producer Jason, I'm Paul. And I'm Aaron. And you've just watched a Fin Factor Spotlight on the Fin Factor Arena coming soon to you. <laughs> Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. If you like this episode, check out our other content, especially interviews. You can interact with us directly through social media at The Fin Factor and on Instagram at Fin Factor. And don't forget to join our live streams on YouTube. 
Visit our website at thefinfactor.com where you'll find all of our episodes as videos or podcasts. You'll also find our exclusive merchandise to help support our show.